OK, so time zones. Developers and time zones are clearly love-hate relationship. And I can tell this just from looking in my Twitter stream, where I see all sorts of developers complaining about time zones, including Ben. Uh, but why are they such a problem? Well, we'll start with a, a description of a simple problem you'll encounter on any website or web application. How soon is now? You have a time and a date, and you want to display it in your interface. Or you want to get users to write it for you. But when is that time? Because 10 o'clock for you is not 10 o'clock for someone else. Well, the simplest solution is to just ignore the problem and never show dates and times in your interface. Problem solved. Woo! <laughs> but not particularly practical. So what's an actual solution? You could just to say, you know what, whatever the time the server thinks it is, that's what time I'm going to output. Users have to do the mental calculations. But again, that's not really a solution. That's just stating the problem again. So let's look into the history of time zones. Basically, there was a concept up that worked really well up until the mid-19th century, which was mean solar time. When the sun is directly overhead, that's noon. Every town and village used that system until the railways and the telegraph started connecting them and they realised that everyone was using a different version of that time because the sun was in a different spot. So a proposal was done to standardise time and divide the world into 24 even bands, one hour per band. This was great, it was a perfect solution. Neat, precise, mathematical, easy to calculate, and like all perfect systems, it remained perfect until it hit reality at which point countries and borders and politics all came into play. Now, this obviously produces a few discrepancies. So, Stefano Maggiolo, uh, a few years ago, did some work calculating the difference between what the time zones are in the world and what mean solar time says they should be on. All of China runs on Beijing time, but China's a big country, so it actually means that you can see here that the furthest west parts of China are three hours out from where the sun says they should be. So you don't want to have to deal with this calculation yourself. You don't want to have to try and work out where they are. So you give your users a preference. You let them choose what time zone they're in. And now you have a whole range of other problems. Because every time zone picker that I've seen on the web is a trade-off between the comprehensiveness of the data and the ease of use. And most users don't actually know what their time zone is, and they hate putting it in like this. And also, just seeing a gigantic list is really annoying. So at this point, you need to ask yourself, well, do you really need a time zone? Do you need a defined time zone? Or do you just need the concept of local time? Because really what you're trying to do is you just take one date and time and display it in a different date and time, depending on where your user is. So, the third solution is you just deal with UTC, a standard reference point for time. You store it in UTC on the server, you output it in UTC to the browser, and you use JavaScript to just convert it to the local time on the fly as the very last step. This is by far the best solution for the majority of use cases, and it's used by a lot of websites today. But what is UTC? Well, UTC is Coordinated Universal Time. It's uh, the successor to Greenwich Mean Time. And it actually stands for kind of not much as an acronym in itself, because when it was being created, the organisers uh, wanted to have the same acronym for every country in the world. And of course, the English and the French can never agree on word order. And so a acronym was picked that was wrong for everyone putting everyone on equal footing. <laughs> and that's great when you can get away with it. But sometimes you do still need to store a user preference for time zones. Uh, if you want to send scheduled notifications at the same time every day in your user's local time, regardless of daylight saving time. If you want to group dates in a chart over the course of a year. So what's a better way to get the user's time zone? Well, you could try and detect it in the browser. This has some problems. <laughs> it seems simple enough in theory. You create a new date in JavaScript. You call the one method that's actually available to you to get the time zone offset. It returns you minutes 
from UTC. Uh, and then you just map the offset to a time zone and find out that everything's broken. So to understand why it's broken, we have to take another little, little history lesson. So five years ago, Patrick McKenzie wrote a blog post, a very famous blog post, called Falsehoods Programmers Believe About Names. Uh, this was just based on how many pieces of software he'd broken with various names. Two years later, Noah Sussman wrote Falsehood, Falsehoods Programmers Believe About Time, inspired by Patrick. And this contained 34 falsehoods, mostly to do with just hours, minutes, seconds, about all the different ways that programs can stuff up when they're trying to deal with time. This got spread around Reddit and Hacker News, and he was inundated with responses of things he'd missed. So a few days later, he had to post the follow-up containing now 79 new falsehoods, mostly to do with time zones. Now, the full list is actually on the right of the screen, but I'll pull out two of my favorites. Reading the client's clock and comparing to UTC is a good way to determine a time zone. False. And I can easily maintain a time zone list myself. Also false. So why are these false? If you want to maintain your own time zone list, these are the problems you're going to have to deal with. Daylight saving time. Not all the countries in the world do daylight saving time. Some do, some don't. For the ones that do, not all parts of the countries use daylight saving time. <laughs> now, daylight saving time, everyone knows that just jumps forward an hour and jumps back an hour, except for Lord Howe Island, which only does half an hour. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> you have to account for it anyway. When do places go in and out of daylight saving time? This was my attempt to visualize the different times of the year when different regions do it. I couldn't fit it all on one screen. Uh, there's also another little oddity there, which is Morocco and Egypt, when Egypt chooses to do so, uh, that go into daylight saving time, come out for one month during Ramadan so that fasting is easier during daylight hours, then they go back into daylight saving time and come out again. <laughs> so four clock changes in one year. And because Ramadan is based on the sighting of the moon, you can't actually know the precise date that that's going to happen. <laughs> All right, so you've got the rules of daylight saving time. You've finally figured that all, that all out, and then they all go and change. So the base offset, so how far ahead or behind UTC a certain region is. Just this year alone, there have been five changes. Uh, there's ranging from whole countries to just small states. Uh, deciding to start or stop doing daylight saving time. This happens a lot. Deciding to change when daylight saving time starts and stops. This also changes a lot. And then the not very common case, but still quite interesting, of uh, the country of Samoa, where the date of December 30, 2011 doesn't exist, because they went from one side of the international date line on December 29, and at midnight, they crossed over and went straight to December 31. This did make sense in order to trade better with Australia and New Zealand, but their nearest neighbours of American Samoa kept trading with America, and the two groups of islands are now separated by about 70 kilometres and 24 hours. It's the same time of day in both places, just a different day. <laughs> and then the big problem is politics, which is really the cause of every other problem that we've already seen because governments change, and when they change, they often change their minds from the previous government. And that's when they actually recognise that a zone exists. There's a group of towns in Australia halfway between Adelaide and Perth that choose a time zone halfway between Adelaide and Perth that the Australian government doesn't recognise. But everyone in those towns does, and so your software has to account for it. Uh, One-off changes, such as the Sydney Olympics, uh, making daylight saving time start an, a month early. This year, Turkey will extend daylight saving time by a month because of local elections. And when you're lucky, the governments will announce these changes with enough notice to update all the software. In reality, most of the changes will happen within a month, and in some extreme cases, within a day of the announcement. 
some very rare cases, they've actually announced that they've done it after the fact. <laughs> so how on earth do you even keep up with all of this? Well, this is where the time zone database comes in. So it's managed by IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. But it's really just uh, run by a group of very dedicated volunteers who try and keep track of all these government announcements, put it into a standard data file, make it open source, and spread it out to all the pieces of software in the computers you run. If you want to use it in JavaScript, there are some libraries that compile this data, but there are multiple releases of the database every year. Every one of these libraries has to recompile their data every time there's a release, which means you need to keep your libraries up to date. So if you're trying to deal with time zones in the browser, you need to keep your dependencies up to date because the server is going to have a list of time zones, and your client's going to have a list of time zones, and they can get out of sync very easily. And keeping up to date is important. So I gave the first version of this talk at JSConf Australia a year and a half ago. This is a list of changes in the time zone database since I gave this talk last time. Now, the last four here have an unreleased date, mainly because they were announced after I landed in Berlin for this conference, and they haven't yet made it to a full release of the database, which just goes to show how often these things change. Now, when I first gave the talk, uh, I picked out one prime example of a very politically motivated change that was very hard to predict ahead of time, which was Crimea switching away from Ukraine time to Moscow time. But that's already been superseded as the best example, because I can't think of a more politically motivated example than North Korea recently switching away from both Japan and South Korea to establish its own time zone. <laughs> but this is all very fascinating, but should you actually care? Well, yes, because your users will. And I know this from bitter personal experience. So th this is my tale of where I didn't do enough research into time zones initially, and I got, caused things to go very, very wrong. Not long after I started at Atlassian, uh, Jira, the issue tracking software, gained the ability to store a user preference for a time zone. I wanted to spend some 20% time to add in a little add-on that would basically turn updating your time zone into a one-click operation. It would just detect when the browser was out of sync with the user preference. And this was fine. Uh, I was using one of the JS libraries before, uh, JS Time Zone Detect. And what it does is it groups identical zones together. So all of Central Europe is detected as just Berlin because the countries all use the exact same rules. For zones that have very similar rules, but daylight saving time starts at slightly different dates, it has some fine-grained logic to work out the difference. This was working fine. I did some statistical analysis. Usage of the feature was going up. And then about a year later, something happened. And it seems innocuous, but Israel started daylight saving time a few days differently from what they were doing it before. And this, combined with the fine-grained logic, caused support requests where users in Israel started being detected as being in Gaza. Uh, as one of our customers noted, it was both incorrect and very offensive. I don't know about you, when I started in tech, I didn't really have career goals. I just thought I'd see how it goes. But I'm pretty sure that if I did have career goals, I would not have made one of them to increase political tension in a long-standing conflict in the Middle East. <laughs> so obviously I had to fix this. But how? I couldn't just update the library. It had changed its API in the meantime. I also realized that this problem could come up with other countries in the future. So I started to rethink the approach completely. And eventually I realized that the best way to do it was to get the list of definitions from the server, which already had to have them anyway, uh, filter the list based on the 
UTC offsets in the browser and then give the user a choice to make the final selection from this filtered list. We haven't had any more support cases about uh, hot topics since then. But I found out later that I wasn't the only one to have made this mistake. So the GNOME Linux software also has a problem with people in Israel being detected as being in Palestine. It just goes to show that it's very, very easy to get something wrong. And that's just dealing with the time zone definitions themselves. So I found out later when I started digging more into this that there are all sorts of other problems to do with time zones when you're dealing with software. As the developers of Angular found out, <laughs> where the unit test suite would only fail when run in New Zealand or certain states of Australia. And the reason this is was effectively a bug in the ECMAScript 5 specification about how to handle historical dates. It said that whatever the daylight saving time rules are now have always applied. Australia and New Zealand started doing daylight saving in 1971, and Angular was testing for dates in 1970. ECMAScript 5 assumes that those dates still had daylight saving time. This has been fixed in ES6, but the damage was done, and the browsers still have this problem. Some people suggested I use geolocation, try and detect where the user is physically, and then map that to a time zone. And to understand why that's maybe not a good idea, we look back 20 years. So Microsoft, in Windows 95, added a time zone selection map. And after a border dispute between Peru and Ecuador, they started to have to redraw the borders. And the real kicker came when the Indian government threatened to boycott all Microsoft products until the border drawn against Pakistan was changed in their map. Microsoft solved the problem by just removing the feature completely. To understand why this is such a problem, you just have to look at Google Maps in three different countries. So in this case, Google Maps Germany, India, and China show the Jammu and Kashmir region with significantly redrawn borders depending on where you're viewing the map. There are some people who have tried to solve this, though. Uh, the GeoNames API does take a latitude and longitude and map it to a time zone identifier. Uh, I don't know what they do about border disputes. I'll leave that up to them to decide. But a lot of you will actually have been using this API without knowing it, because it's better known as the backing service for Apple's time zone selection. If you want to use this in the browser, it's not as seamless as it will be in Apple's products, because every geolocation request prompts the user to allow it. So some other things that I learned. You should never rely on the abbreviation of a time zone as being a unique identifier. For example, IST, which some people will just think is island standard time or island summer time, also applies to Israel and India. Uh, the other thing is that IANA time zone database identifiers, such as Europe slash Berlin, uh, are shown in UIs everywhere. I've made this mistake as well. What I didn't realize is that the maintainers of the database actually recommend you don't display those to the end user, because they're not easily translatable, and they don't necessarily represent a region. So they recommend you use the long name of the time zone, such as Central European Time. And this is where the Unicode Common Locale Data Repository comes in. They maintain mappings between time zone identifiers and translations in a whole heap of different locales. If you want to use this in the browser, there is the jQuery Foundation Globalize project, which can load in JSON data from CLDR and handle the translations for you. But as with everything, there is now another trade-off, the comprehensiveness of the translations and the file size that you're loading in the browser. So that's a lot of doom and gloom. But there are some better things on the way if you want to deal with time zones in the browser. And the first one of these is the ECMAScript Interni Internationalization API, which says that you'll just be able to do one call and get the user's time zone identifier. 
as determined by their operating system. Unfortunately, you can't do that cross-browser right now. Uh, the first version of the specification had some very undefined behavior that's been fixed up in version two. Uh, Chrome's the only browser that actually gives you this right now. But it, is, uh, it will do away with a lot of the problems that I've encountered. Uh, this has also led into someone wanting to do a navigator.time zone, much shorter API as a way of getting that. It probably won't get through because of the previous API, but people are trying to work out better ways of doing this. Uh, the current problem with the time zone database as well is that every time there's a release, you have to be notified of it. You pretty much just have to sign up to a mailing list, find out when there's a new release, download the new version, add it back into your software, and see how that goes. Uh, there are some people trying to work on a distribution service. So you just subscribe to the service. When there's a new update, you just get given it automatically. But there is one thing that I won't listen to as a solution, which is Swatch Internet Time, or also known as removing the concept of time zones altogether. And I understand why uh, Stefano Maggiolo, again, has uh, written a very good blog post about what he calls emotional time. And it points out that if you remove the concept of time zones and just put the entire world on one single time reference, it still doesn't help you know whether someone on the other side of the world is awake or asleep at the same time as you. It still doesn't let you know if they're at work or at home. It just changes the reference point, but it doesn't solve the problem. OK, so we're getting to the end of a long day. And I just want you to remember three key, three, key, three key things when dealing with time zones. The first one is, do you really need a time zone and a time zone definition? Or do you just need the concept of local time? Because they are two very different things. Because for the majority of cases I've seen, you just need to know what the local time is for the user at that moment in time. The next one is, if you deal with time zones, you will be wrong. I don't know where, I don't know when, but you will be wrong somehow. It's like a moment of zen. You embrace it, you hold on to it, you move on, and you try and minimize how wrong you are. And the final one is that these problems have existed for a, long, a lot longer than JavaScript has. There have been people working on these problems since before our language existed. Time zones are hard, and a lot of people have put a lot of work into trying to make them easier to deal with in software. We should learn from the decades of experience of these people and not try and reinvent the wheel. Learn from them, don't ignore history. Thank you very much. <laughs>